Hello. In this video tutorial, I'm going to explain the usage of factory function. Factory functions are more powerful approach for creating your controls dynamically from your model data. For example, if you have, uh, if you wanted to create your controls dynamically, depending upon the data that is coming from the backend system, um, then factory function is one option that you could use to dynamically create your controls. Say for example, suppose if I have an array of entries being written from that particular uh, service call and if that array has 10 entry and if I wanted to create uh, like a tab with 10 tabs based upon those entries which are available in those uh, array value, then the factory function will be looped for each and every entry in the array value and you can dynamically create the controls based upon those values. So this factory function, it brings out two parameters as an importing parameter. One is going to be the ID of the control which you're going to create and the other one is going to be the context value. That is, if a row has 10 records, initially the row one will come as the context value, then the row two will come as a context value. So you get the context information for each and every row that you're going to process in the context with which you can set the binding value to this particular uh, control that you're going to generate. So with the help of factory function, you, you can dynamically generate the layout depending upon the model data. So I have uh, created a sample JSON data over here using which I'm going to explain this factory function. So the data that I have created is that I have this tab segregation which has two tabs in it. So I have this tab with ID tab one named tab A and I have another tab with ID tab two and tab name as tab B. So inside this further, I have three features for this particular row and two features for the second row. So making use of this context value, I'm going to dynamically build an application where I'm going to make use of factory function to create controls dynamically. So if I'm going to add more entries over here, then automatically the controls will also, will also be loaded in my uh, system. So I'm going to copy this data and based upon this, I'm going to create my application. So I'm going to create a new application project let's say so I'm naming my application as demo factory and I'm going to create my application with initial view and I'm going to give the uh, view name as main and I'm going to develop it with XML mode of development now my intention is that I'm going to create an icon tab bar and the number of tab pages that that are supposed to be in this icon tab bar is supposed to come from the model itself. So depending upon number of data, number of rows that I have in the model aggregation, I'm going to create that many number of tabs. So before we get into that, we will take a look at this API documentation for uh, icon tab bar. So icon tab bar, it has this aggregation called as an item within which you're going to dynamically create your icon tabs which could be either icon tab filter or icon tab separator. So in this case, I'm going to use this icon tab filter. So dynamically going to create this icon tab bar and inside that you're going to put your content. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to create an icon tab bar and the number of items that I wanted to create. So that is the number of uh, icon tabs that I wanted to create. I'm going to decide that using the factory function by binding it to that of a model. So first thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder called as model and inside that I'm going to put the sample JSON data. Let's say data dot JSON and I have added this sample data. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to the controller on init function and here I'm going to instantiate my model variable O model is equal to new sap dot ui dot model dot json dot json model so i'm instantiating the model of json type where i'm going to save the path as in the model folder i'm going to consume this data dot json file as a data for this model so i have instantiated my model and the next step i'm going to get the reference of the view and i'm going to set this model instance at the view level so that all the controls inside the view will have the reference to this model then I'm going to go over to my view and here I am just changing my uh, title to factory function and inside the content of the page I'm going to create my icon tab bar 
so I'm going to create this icon tab bar which is of type this so I'm going to use this as a class name so I'm going to create this icon tab bar for which I'm going to give the ID as ID tab bar then what else I'm going to do is that generally when we wanted to bind this items or if I wanted to set this content aggregation dynamically what we would generally do is that I would perform a binding like this say for example I will say items aggregation then whatever the binding that should come over here then I will create my items aggregation and inside this item aggregation I will be giving the template that I wanted for each and every item now what I'm going to do is that instead of using this aggregation part I'm going to make use of the function factory function to create this create this content so what I'm going to do is inside this binding information I'm going to give this path information where the path that I'm going to give will point out to the array value based upon which the factory function should get executed then I'm going to define the factory function where I'm going to say uh, say dot create tab bar so I'm going to dynamically create this tab bar and we used to provide this naming convention uh, create for the factory function just like we use handle for uh, event handlers and format for formatter functions so I'm just going to use this name as create and I have used dot to represent that this function is available there in the controller itself you don't have to look for in a different file so I'm going to go to my controller and I'm going to create this function over there where I'm going to create this function so I don't need to place a dot here it's just a representation there and like I said it is going to take a couple of parameter one is going to be the ID and other one is going to be the context information now based upon this I'm going to create my icon tab bar so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a debugger here then I'm going to perform the binding with that of tab segregation for the items so this tab it basically has two entries which means two tabs are expected to be created so I'm going to bind it to the tabs which is available in the root location so now I'm going to run this application to see in debugger how many times my factory function is getting executed So I have just uh, given this factory function and I'm not returning anything out of this yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a folder called as a fragment. This time I'm going to create the fragment folder inside this demo factory itself because that is the package path which has been uh, specified here in the resource section. So that is the one path that has been specified in the resource section. So instead of adding new values, I'm just going to define everything inside this so I'm going to create a fragment over here and inside this I'm going to create a file called as a fragment where I'm going to say I can tab bar dot fragment dot XML so I'm just creating a fragment over here where I'm going to define uh, what are the properties that I wanted for the fragment so I'll just make use of this fragment template So I'll just make use of this fragment template and inside this fragment template I'm just going to define my control that I wanted so inside this fragment what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create this icon tab filter because I know that that is the supporter type for the items aggregation of the icon tab bar so if I check this items aggregation I could see that the icon tab filter is the supported type so I'm going to make use of this icon tab filter here so I'm going to create an icon tab filter and I'm going to create it as I'm going to uh, give this property of the item such as text and key so I'm going to give the text property and key property here and how I'm going to give it as for example um, 
from my data when this first row has been pointed out I'm going to give this tab ID and tab name as the key and text so in the key I will give this tab ID I'm performing a relative binding here and in the text I'm going to give the tab name so when the icon tab bar is created for the second time with the second row tab 2 and tab B will be the key and text so I have performed this binding here now what I'm going to do is I have created the fragment which is going to create me the control so what I will do now is I'm going to instantiate this fragment here variable O fragment is equal to SAP dot UI dot XML fragment so using this fragment class I'm going to instantiate it and when I'm going to instantiate it I'm going to make use of the ID that was generated by the system then I'm going to provide the name of the fragment as demo factory inside that I have this fragments folder inside that I have this icon tab bar comma this I will add this controller reference to this then what I'm going to do is I have this context information based upon which this fragment is supposed to get the values so I'm going to say O fragment dot set binding context of O context so I'm doing an element binding where I'm giving this particular row information to that particular fragment which is instantiated during the first run then I return this O fragment as an output so now I will go and refresh this application So I have uh, changed the binding syntax to complex then just to ensure that I'm making sure that I am returning this value as O fragment which is correct and in the view I'm giving this factory function so create tab bar is the name and create tab bar is the name here as well so uh, let's check it so now you could see that it has came into this one the reason uh, why we have missed out earlier is that I did not change the binding syntax to complex. So now you could see that the first time it has came up with the first record. So if you check this context information, o context dot get object, you could see that this time it has came up with the information tab A. So based upon this information, I am creating a fragment which is going to display the child controls, and I have set this fragment as a binding context to that so that that instance of the fragment will display values according to this particular row and I'm returning this fact fragment as an output. Now it has came for the second row and here you could check that the value is going to be tab B. Then you could see here that a couple of tabs has been generated inside this. Now I'm going to add one more factory function where based upon that factory function whatever the number of features that I have based upon this I'm going to dynamically create the list over here so that list I'm going to put it in the content area of the tab bar so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a new fragment which I'm going to call it as feature list dot fragment dot XML and I will make use of this fragment template where inside this what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create the list control where for the list I'm going to give this header text as whatever the text that appears as a feature name so I perform this aggregation binding here now inside this icon tab bar fragment so inside this icon tab bar I need to create the content now this content I'm going to give it through a frag, uh, factory function where I'm going to say content is equal to or let's say 
I'm going to create a horizontal layout XML MS layout is equal to SAP dot UA dot layout and inside this content aggregation I'm going to create a horizontal layout which has this content aggregation which I'm going to give it through binding where I'm going to specify the path as now I'm going to specify the path as so already I have a relative binding here which is pointing out to this tab name and tab ID so I will give this array value to this as a path so for each and every entry in the array I wanted to execute this factory function which is dot create feature list then I'm going to create this respective method in the controller then I'm going to remove this dot function of ID comma context as an importing parameter and what I'm going to do is that for each and every row of that particular entry particular feature list that is for each and every row of this object I'm going to create a list control so which I have already defined in the fragment so I'm just going to instantiate that fragment and return as an output so variable o fragment is equal to sap dot ui dot xml fragment where I'm going to create it with the ID which was generated by the framework and I'm going to say demo factory dot fragments dot feature list is the I, uh, fragment that I wanted to instantiate along with the keyword this then I'm going to say I'll just copy this I'm going to return this value here so now if I go and refresh my application now one more formatter function sorry one more factory function should be executed at the item level for this particular content region and it should dynamically render the list so here you could see that for the tab a I could see that feature A, feature B and feature C list has been generated whereas if I go to tab B I could see that feature D and feature E list has been generated based upon the context data which I have provided. So in this way based upon the model data you could dynamically create your controls with the help of the factory function. So thanks for watching this video. Have a nice day.